how to create a fully responsive overlay using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. All of the styles in JavaScript are going to be on our index HTML page is our font family and our background color set. And now what we want to start doing is we want to create our body element and add an ID of body. And for now, that's all we want to do to our body element. We will come back to that later on. Next, we want to start off by adding a div and then we want to add the ID overlay to this like so. And then we want to go ahead and add the JavaScript function here on click. And then we want to make that equal to our function that we have not created yet called off. And if you guys don't know JavaScript, don't panic. I'm going to show you guys everything you need to know regarding this overlay. And it will make sense as we go on in today's video. So make sure you watch until the end. Then we want to add one more div just like so. And what we want to do here is actually give this an ID of inside overlay. And you guys are going to see this come together. So you're going to have your top overlay and then you're going to have your inside overlay. And I'm going to show you guys exactly why this part is essential to making this work the way it did in the beginning of the video. Now we want to add one more div and then we are going to add the ID of Text. Then we're going to add our P element and I'm just going to call this Kalman Web Design an anchor element and we're just going to change the href of this to a hashtag symbol like so because we don't necessarily need to link to anything but here's where you would link to your for example add to cart page so this would be the link right here on this element inside of our anchor element we're going to include a div and we're going to add to cart so like i was just showing you guys that's going to be this feature that we have right here it's going to look like this so far because again we haven't added any styling and then this is actually going to be our button and we're just going to add the class of b TN for a button. So this is going to be what overlays on your screen. And as you can see on the right side, you can see it right now because we haven't added our styling, but that is what's going to show up once we include our styling. And now we want to include the items that are going to show up right on our page that let us get to our overlay by clicking on them. Like I showed you guys in the example to do is add an H2 element and then we are going to add our button here. So this is going to be a div and the class is going to be button dash two. We're going to add our text turn on overlay just so you guys don't get confused and you know exactly what's going on. So now if we save, we're going to have all the HTML elements that we need. So this is going to be our overlay in the top once we start adding the styles. And this is going to be what you see right here. But again, it's really rough because we haven't added any styling yet. So what we're going to do is go back to our style element up here inside our head element and start adding our styles. So first, what we need to do is target our ID of overlay. And then we want to position this in the fixed format because it's going to be an overlay. It has to be set up this particular way. And then now you guys can see if I save it going to be fixed on the top. So that's what's going to give us our overlay functionality. And that's why it needs to be fixed. And we want to change this to display none for now, because when you open the page, you don't want it to display automatically. So now you guys can just see the text right here. And then once we start adding our JavaScript, we'll be able to toggle on and off this particular overlay. So now you want to set the width and height to 100 because you want this to take up the entire page when you open it up. Just like I have here, you can see that there's this little gray in the background. So that's what you're targeting with this overlay ID. It's that little gray in the background here that you can see when I toggle on and off my effect. So now we want to change the top to zero because we are fixed. So we want our overlay to be right in the center of our page. Then we're going to do the same thing to our left right and bottom property change those all to zero now that we have those changed we're going to add our background color to give it that little gray effect that we have in the example and we're just going to do to start we're going to start with our white color and then we'll change it from there in visual studio code i like to use this little feature so what we're going to do is actually make it black and then we're going to change this to rgb so we can actually add 
our opacity here. So th these first three are gonna determine your color, which is making it black. And then the fourth, if you don't know how to add that, you just add it as the fourth element here in this RGB coloring. And then that's gonna control your opacity. So if you wanna see that for now, just disable your display of none and then save. And then now you'll see that gray overlay that's gonna be showing up. So we'll leave this disabled for now to make sure we get our styling right. And then once we're ready, we will re-enable this style right here. And now you wanna change your Z index to two because you want this overlay to be closer to you than the original website is. So that's why you change your Z index to two because that's closer to you than your base website. Think of it like a layer this way coming out at you from the screen. Now we wanna target our inside overlay. We wanna do all the same things that we did up top. So just go ahead and copy all of this. All you need to do is take away this display of none because we don't need that here because our inside overlay is a child of our overlay. You guys can see that here. Here's our parent element and here's our child. So we don't need to turn the display on and off on our inside overlay because we're doing that on the parent element. Now we wanna change our position to absolute for our inside overlay and you'll see why in just a second. And then we're gonna change our width and our height to 50% because we don't want this uh, part where the text is going to be displayed that you guys can see here. We only want this portion to take up half of our screen width and height wise as you guys can see it's doing right here. And then we want to leave the top left right and bottom all at zero and then we want to change our background color to 0.8 right here. So we want to up our opacity so it's darker than our gray background here. And now if I save, you can start to see this come together. Now we have our actual background color here. So we have our full overlay, which takes up our entire website page. And then we have the one that's actually going to display the text here. Now we want to make our Z index two again for the same reason we did it up here. Then we want to add a border radius, which is going to add the curvature along the edge of this black element right here, which you'll see in a second. Then we want to change the transform to translate 50 50 and what that's going to do is put our element right in the middle of our page no matter what our view size is and then we want to text align our text to the center now let's refresh that and now you guys can see we have that edge on the outside which looks nice and clean and then our element is in the center of our page no matter what our viewport size is now we want to make our position absolute again for our text ID right here that I'm targeting. And then we wanna change the top to 50% and the left to 50%. So we center this text inside of this element here. Change this to 50% and then you guys will see exactly how that will work. Now we wanna change our font size to something that's a little bit bigger. So I'm just gonna change this to three viewport width. If you don't know what that is, it just scales the size of the text based on the width of your viewport. And then what we want to do is add the transform property followed by translate minus 50% minus 50%. What this is going to do is help us center our text in the middle of our element here. It's not in the middle right now. So what you need to do is come back here and add these properties, make the top 50% and make the left 50% and then go ahead and save that. And now your text is gonna show up right in the middle of the element of your choice. And then there's some padding on the top. So that's why it's a little bit lower. As you guys can see, there's some padding over our Kalman web design element. And so you guys can see exactly where we're going now. Now we just need to add some supplementary styles to make everything look a little bit prettier. Now we're going to target our BTN class, which is our first button class. I'm just going to add the styles in there. You guys can pause the video if you wanna copy these. Now we're gonna target our anchor element in our HTML. Here are the styles for that. Lastly, we're going to add our BTN number two, which is going to be our button two class and add these exact styles to make everything look a lot prettier than it is now. And I forgot to add the color to my P elements. I want it to be white, so I'm gonna add that now. So now you guys can see that everything is readable, and now we need to set up the actual functionality of this all, because as you guys can see, it is not doing anything right now. It's showing our overlay, even though we haven't clicked our button at all. So what we wanna do is go to the bottom of our page, all the way before the closing body tag here, and we're going to add a script 
script element to start adding our JavaScript functionality. And all we're gonna have for this is two functions. Our first function is going to be on, and then our second function is going to be off. These are really simple functions. If you guys don't know any JavaScript, this is going to be a perfect time for you guys to learn a little bit of basic JavaScript. So this is exactly how your function will look in JavaScript, just like that. And now what we wanna do is actually grab our overlay ID, which is going to be this one right here. It's going to literally be called overlay. So to grab that, we're gonna grab the document by typing document and then get element by ID. And then we're simply going to add our element ID of overlay. And then what we want to do is actually target the style. So now that we have our document, our element by ID, we want to grab our styling and then we actually want to change the display of it. So you're going to type in display like this and then you're going to make that equal to lock because we want to display our element as a block. And then what we're going to do is literally copy this exact line and now we're going to put it in our off function. And the only change that we are going to make is going to be our block ending right here. We're going to change this to none. So basically what these two functions are going to do are they're going to display our overlay as a block. And then when you click that button again, it's going to not display anything. So it's going to toggle it on and off. And one thing that I forgot to add like a real genius here is turn on overlay. You want to add the on click function here in your HTML and make this equal to your on function. Because if you only have one function, it's not going to do what you want. Refresh your page, it's automatically going to show your overlay. And that's because we have that display element from earlier toggled off. So go ahead and toggle that back on to display your overlay as none and then save your page, refresh it. And now once you open the page for the first time, it's not going to show that overlay. And now when you click this button, what it's going to do is show your overlay. And when you click anywhere outside of the element, it's going to exit out of that element. And then if you click this, it will take you to your link. But in our case, we just have that little hashtag symbol, so it's not taking us anywhere. But if you do want to link somewhere, just add your link, keeping your page from scrolling when you actually display that overlay. So what you're going to do is get your document, get element by ID, and then that ID that we talked about on our body element earlier, I will show you guys one more time because I know it can get confusing, that we added at the beginning of the video right here on our body element called ID body. We're going to grab that element and then we want to change the styling of that element when we click this button here and we want to change the overflow style to hidden and this is going to keep you from scrolling up and down the page when you click this button so now save that refresh your page i'm going to add a paragraph element to the bottom of our page and just put high inside so i can show you guys the functionality of this so you guys can see that i can scroll up and down the page like so but when i click this it's going to disable that feature because of our document get element id style dot overflow equals hidden it's going to hide that feature but the problem is when you get out of it you still can't scroll up and down your page so what you want to do is copy this line and put it in your off function down here like so and then what we're gonna do is you only have to delete one thing select your hidden here boom delete that leave it as empty quotation marks save your page refresh and now when you open your overlay it's going to disable your scrolling function and then when you click out of it it's going to reappear and you can successfully scroll the page like you did when you first opened it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, do not be afraid to reach out to us at our website at kalmanwebdesign.com or go in the comment section on this video and we will help you out completely for free. Have a great day. Hope this video helped out.